Welcome to Talk Bowling, episode number 32. I'm John Conner. I'm Tony Rucco. And I'm Ryan Hallstrom. Talk Bowling is proud to be bringing you the latest information from the bowling industry, bowling tips, and updates on the largest bowling internet website, bowlingball.com. You're wearing the same shirt as last episode. I was just like thinking looks, the same thing. <laughs> it looks nice. <laughs> Five minutes between episodes? <laughs> I have two blue shirts, so I don't, I don't know what you guys are going to say. I, no one owns two of the same t-shirts. Bowlingball.com shirts, maybe. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, this week, that seems weird to say. Yeah. This episode. On this episode. On this episode. Still not at John's age, but on this episode of Talk Actually, Bowling. Actually, that is my age right now. Uh, we're going to cover spare shooting a little bit. Nice. Uh, I think we had some emails about this. John's been bugging me about this. Um, I, need, I definitely need some help. So we're going to go over uh, the common 369 spare shooting system, All right. which I think is the easiest for everyone to use. Yeah. Uh, we'll go over using a spare ball, using your first ball, uh, when to throw it straight, maybe when to hook it a little bit at the ball. So uh, first we'll get into uh, explaining the 369 spare system. All right. Which he did on a previous episode. Slightly. Did you? All right, then I'll let you go at it again. Yeah, I'll touch on it a little bit more. The 369 is one of the most common uh, spare shooting systems, one of the easiest adaptable spare, spare shooting systems you can use. Um, what you're going to do is you're going to move three boards right. If you're a right handed bowler, let's say you leave a two pin. Come on. Okay. Line. Leave the two pin. What you'd normally do using this system is move three boards right of where you step your strike ball. So from here, this is going to allow you to just throw the ball in the same spot. You're further right on the approach. This ball is going to hook right into the two pin. Gotcha. So, taking that a little bit further, say you come in high loop a four pin. What you're going to do now is move six boards right, throw it in the same spot, and the ball is going to hook over and hit the four pin. Same kind of concept when you move a seven pin for a right handed bowler. Now you're going to move nine boards right, throw it in the same spot, the ball is going to hook over, and you will cover your seven pin. So, this is mostly for single pin spares, or? This works, no, well, say you have a two pin in the front, and you have a two, four, five. Right. It'll work for that as well. Yeah, it's kind of an area thing, you know, the or you know, a generalization. Yeah. Um, I guess I kind of I'll touch on two points here because I kind of use a three six nine, but I use a spare ball. Um, so I have a starting point for let's say a ten pin. Okay. Uh, so where I start and where I look is is where I do on for ten pins regardless of lane condition because I'm throwing the ball straight, and then I go three boards to the right off of that for six pin, and six boards to the right off of that for like a three pin. And the same on the other side. I have a point that I use to shoot a seven pin, mm. and then I go three and six in off of that as the pin comes closer up towards the head pin. So the system's still there. It's just because when you use a spare ball, which is our next point, you kind of, you take lane condition out of play. Is how I was always taught. It doesn't matter if the lanes are dry or oily or right. you know if, if they're over or under. When you're throwing it straight, you're throwing it straight. So if you take the lane condition out of play and you have your points that you're going to throw it at to get it to a 10 pin or a 7 pin, then you can kind of build off of that moving back in. So that's that's kind of how I do it. So you move your feet instead of your target? I move my feet and my target. Just a My target not so much, it, it just a little bit. Um, only because I still, I throw a really light spare ball, so I have a little bit of give in there. <laughs> right. Because if I tug it or something, I have a little bit of room. But no, you would normally leave your target the same and just move your feet. You're just going to change your angle. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, um, hooking is some spares. There are some spares that you should hook at. 2-8. Um, 2-8. Yeah, yeah, I think anything I think anything double wood, yeah. you, should, you should hook the ball at. Typically, um, uh, you know, it comes into play what kind of lane condition you're bowling on, too. Yeah. Um, it really depends on what kind of bowler you are. There are some bowlers that will still shoot straight at a 2-8 or a 3-9. Right. That's kind of, you know, it's a little, a little more difficult. It if is. you can do it, it's you know, more power to you. Yeah. Uh, baby split, I always say you hook at. Uh, we have hmm. people on our team, or last year's team, that think <laughs> otherwise, but I say you hook at that. Uh, but you'll you'll figure it out, and that's what we talk about, practicing spares. Yeah. It's important to go and practice spares. I see people go out all the time, and they just, they're out there throwing strikes, throwing strikes, and they're never working on spares. Right. And uh, so, kind of bringing in my golf analogy, it's kind of like not working on your putting <laughs> or your chipping, right? <laughs> so, exactly. practice your spares. Spares uh, are going to help you score dramatically, right? Now, how do you really practice spares if there's not a, the pins aren't down there to, to well, shoot? Well, you can play like a low game mm -hmm. and try and take the seven and ten off clean, right? Um, and then you know, really, you see a lot of people if they're if they're not keeping score and they're practicing, they're just hitting the reset button when they don't strike right. to get a full rack. Shoot at that spare, you know, and and you'll get your own little system down. 
Right. Now, I know there are some Brunswick pin setters out there that you can actually program what spares you want to have out to shoot. Yeah. Which so is if you have, really nice. If you have that, take advantage of it. Cause, yeah. So yeah. ask the house. Yeah, find out if there's anything they can do. And if not, don't hit the reset button. Just You're, you're paying for that frame, most likely, if you're paying right. to buy the game or whatever. <laughs> you may as well throw it to spare. Right. Um, and you can come up with your own system. It doesn't have to be what we're talking about. But, right. you know, modified systems of spare shooting work. Right. I can actually throw out a few drills we used to do at Vincennes. Give away a few secrets. But a few of the drills we used to do up there is... Uh, something called two, uh, two, three, two, three, four, six, seven, ten. What you would do, shoot the two pin, the three pin, without hitting the head pin. You hit the head pin, you have to start over. So you're going to have to throw six shots in a row. First ball, you hit the two pin on the left, three pin on the right. Four pin, six pin, seven pin, ten pin. You have to pick off the seven and the ten at the very end. Yeah. So you mess up any time, you have to start over. So that's a really good one to focus on those left hand side, left side spares and right side, right side spares. Yep. It's pretty difficult. <laughs> Except when you're shooting at the two pin, you don't normally try to hit the left side of it. If I'm a right-handed bowler, I'm not going to try and hit the left side of the two pin okay. if it's up by itself. Hopefully, uh, you practice that when you do the two ten split. Okay. I'm just making sure I'm. No, that to, yeah, that's that'd be the reason why you're trying to do that for. That this is more for accuracy and and position of the ball, right? Right. Got so work on that. Practice, practice, practice. Mm -hmm. Sponsors. Sponsors. <laughs> All right. This episode brought to you by virtualtournaments.com, bringing you bowling tournaments without the hassle. Virtual Tournaments has a new look to their website, additional term tournament levels, and they're now introducing youth tournaments where youth bowlers can bowl and earn scholarship money for college. Check them out at virtualtournaments.com. Very cool. All right. Trivia. <sighs> this is a long answer. <laughs> Go for it, Brian. All right. Last week's question. What was last week's question? It was so Hold long on, ago. I'm right here. It was so long ago. Wait, I think it's on this page. <laughs> Mine's over there in an airplane. <laughs> last week we asked, when, traditionally when throwing a hook ball, as the ball travels down the lane, what is the proper sequence of events? You guys have any, any guesses? Yeah. Except for the answer right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> Congratulations to... Uh, no one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, we're going to give you time this week. Yeah. <laughs> All right, the correct sequence is skid, roll, hook. And like drop, stop, and roll. Exactly. Stop, drop, and roll. Something like that. Pretty drop, cool. stop, and roll. Yeah, go yeah. stop, drop. <laughs> <laughs> the ball actually skids through the oil on the first part of the lane. As it starts hitting the drier part of the lane, the ball begins to gain traction and then starts rolling. As the ball gets to an even drier part of the lane, it creates even more friction and then starts to hook. Therefore, skid, roll, hook. Skid, roll, hook. That's it. So if you're not getting skid, roll, hook, you're using the wrong ball, I'm assuming. Is that? Or there's no oil on the lane. That's very true. Well, it's really hard to find it hooks, rolls, and skids. <laughs> <laughs> That's awful. <clears throat> All right. This week's question. A bowling lane is made, made of boards placed widthwise from gutter to gutter all the way to the end of the lane. How many boards are there across the lane? Mm. We didn't do this one before? No, no we did. Length of a lane? The parts of the lane. Hmm. I'm more impressed that width wise and is one word. Probably is, but I do not know for sure. We'll spell, spell check and pick it up and all that. Ah. So width wise is one word. Got it. Hmm. Keep a note of that because I'm <laughs> sure it's going to come in handy somewhere. I'm sure I can use it sometime. Don't know when. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <let's, let's laughs> before this goes out of control. <laughs> and. Send your, send your answers in to questions at Talk Bowling. Yeah. Leave a comment on Talk Bowling. Uh, and Twitter. we need your questions <laughs> and your concerns and stuff you want to hear about. Right. Let us know. We need topics. We'll come up with them, but we like answering your questions. Uh, and there is a gentleman. More productive. Yeah, there, there is a young man who, who sent us a video, and we haven't forgot about you. We just haven't had a chance to watch it yet. Right. But we'll, we plan on watching it and getting you some comments um, on one of our future episodes and sending you an email with more detail. I don't know. I watched a little bit of it. Just a small bit. And there's a couple of quick quick things. From yeah, we'll go, we'll 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 go over it. it all. We didn't forget about you, though. Yeah. Uh, and please remember that BowlingWorld.com is free shipping on every item, every day. The price you see is the price you'll pay. No hidden handling fee. Wow, you actually did that. I, I, I See how I mixed it up there? Yeah, <laughs> nice. We're not going to say who has hidden handling fees, but we don't have hidden handling fees. Or shipping costs. Ground continental U.S. Yes. Perfect. Remember that. Thank right. you very much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Let me try this again.
I'll go this way now. Because you, you didn't know you didn't like that, it the last There time. you go. That's that's where you messed up last. I did mess up the plane flew, didn't I? You didn't mean it for it to fly though. I did mean for it to fly. Not with that fold. I did too. That's a Chinese fold. Uh, I can't tell you the name of it. Because I can't pronounce it. Oh, that is that is tight right there. Oh, oh got it! <laughs>